What's up you guys, Stoops back again with another video, and although I mainly play my Holy Paladin with many of my subscribers and I haven't been pushing too much on this season, a lot of you have been asking me to update and create a new Holy Paladin guide for 7.35. Got my little birthday balloons behind me, gotta adjust my camera here. So that's exactly what I'm doing, I'm gonna be updating my Holy Paladin guide for 7.35, and just like all my previous guides in the past, in this guide I'm gonna be covering my general talents, my honor talents, I'll go over some quick tips and tricks that you guys can use, as well as my overall thoughts and arena comments. Now regarding races for the Holy Paladin, it's pretty obvious in my opinion what races are the best if you are playing on the Horde, then it's probably going to be Blood Elf, and if you're on the Alliance, then most likely it's going to be the Human for that very, very powerful racial known as Every Man for Himself. Now hopping right into our General Talents first, for level 15 I prefer playing Bestow Faith. It is that instant cast low mana cost spell that's a delayed heal that you can use on yourself or on your allies, and it's just a simple low mana cost spell that you can use off cooldown to kind of predict incoming damage or to stabilize your target. Just remember that it heals your target after 5 seconds, so it's kind of like a delayed holy shock. Now for level 30, I see some players actually using Unbreakable Spirit now. It just reduces the cooldown of your Divine Protection or your Divine Shield and Land Hands, but that doesn't really work for Arena. But for me personally, I just love Cavalier. I like having two charges on my steed. It allows me to get in and out of the fight to cut away from melee or to set up my hammer of justice which is very important for the holy paladin similar to disc priest regarding fears you are responsible for landing your hammer of justice on targets to set up those longer cc chains now for level 45 all of these options are viable just starting out in my opinion if you're new to the class i recommend you use fist of justice and i'll get to that in a second but it's the easier talent to use so for example every time you stun a target and then following that you throw out a judgment you knock off 10 seconds off your hammer of justice cooldown this is great in like wmp maybe you're responsible for landing stuns this is also great for peeling off a single enemy you can use this in twos and if you're new to the class again i recommend this talent however if you are getting trained a lot by maybe two melee and you feel that your hammer of justice is going to dr a lot maybe you're playing with like another rep paladin or something like that maybe you're trying to play with a cupid or there's just a lot of stuns going on in your comp it's instant cast and it's on a 1.5 minute cooldown i'll sometimes use this again i remember i was playing with like cupid with some of my subscribers which is much better with like a shaman or a priest but again hammer of justice was going to dr a lot and i could blind off the traps and that was a good way of adding on my own CC to close out the kill. And then finally you have Repentance, which you might have remembered from previous expansions. It's on a 15 second cooldown, has a 30 yard range, and this ability is good in like maybe playing with like a Boomkin or any class or comp that lacks CC. Also Repentance is great in 2v2s. And on top of that, you still got to keep your Hammer of Justice. So you don't lose any CC for specking into these. You can still keep your Hammer of Justice. This allows Holy Paladin a lot of variety. Level 45 has three different talents that allow you to add on CC to the Holy Paladin. It's a great way to bring variety, comp selection, I wish Blizzard would keep this or at least implement this model across other classes and that's why I enjoy the Holy Paladin so much. But again, Fist of Justice allows you to have your Hammer of Justice up much more frequently and the important part about this is because it puts you in the habit of using your judgment off cooldown. Now, not only does it add damage to the fight but more importantly one of your artifact traits knight of the silver hand reduces the amount of damage you take for the next four seconds so it's almost like a passive wall you can throw out your judgment take damage reduction and reduce the cooldown of your hammer of justice but even if you were to spec into repentance or blinding light it creates a great habit of you keeping up that damage reduction known as knight of the silver hand now for level 60 i always spec into devotion aura it's a great trait it reduces the amount of damage your whole team takes within your 10 yard radius now keep in mind it's going to be split but once you activate your aura mastery everyone within that aura will take 20 percent reduced damage so it's a powerful group cooldown and it makes your team a little bit more tanky now for level 75 i always go holy avenger it's a really powerful cooldown it increases your haste by 30 percent and increases your holy shock healing by 30 percent for 20 seconds and it's on a 1.5 minute cooldown the great part about this is is it allows you to kind of weave this spell in between your wings if you're falling behind you kind of rotate between your Avenging Wrath, your Holy Avenger, and your Tears Deliverance. So you can kind of rotate these major cooldowns to stabilize inside and outside of your, let's say, Blessing of Sacrifice or Blessing of Protection. For level 90, you're going to spec into Sanctified Wrath. It increases the duration of your Avenging Wrath by 25%, and it also reduces the Holy Shock cooldown by 50% 
during its duration. So this is really huge. Getting out your Holy Shock is really, really important for the Holy Paladin. The more Holy Shocks you get out, the more crits you might get, which is going to proc your fast cast Holy Light. Like I talked about in my previous guide, Holy Paladins still revolve around that mechanic. Now for level 100, all of these options are viable. Beacon of Virtue is usually used in Battlegrounds. I'll kind of activate this ability inside of Battlegrounds. It's a great AoE heal ability. You can play like melee wings, pop out your melee wings, use your Beacon of Virtue, maybe use Light of the Dawn, and then keep chunking damage and then spam this ability off cooldown. The more damage you do, the more people you're going to heal around you. Beacon of Virtue will heal three injured allies within 30 yards. And this lasts for eight seconds on a 15 second cooldown. So if you are doing battlegrounds on your Holy Paladin, it's kind of boring to play Beacon of the Lightbringer or Beacon of Faith. I always play Beacon of Virtue and I play melee wings and I have a blast healing inside of battlegrounds. Now remember these beacons do replace your beacon of light this is a way for paladins to kind of spread heal and refund some of their mana so you can place your beacon on one target and then cast a heal on yourself and not only will you heal yourself but you'll also heal that individual for a portion of the healing well for beacon of the lightbringer it works on your mastery so currently in legion your mastery causes your spells to heal for 42% more based on their proximity, so the target you're healing compared to you. So the closer you are to your target, the more you're gonna heal. However, with Beacon of the Lightbringer, it just makes your beacon kind of become you. So basically, if you put your beacon on that target and then you heal that target, that target will receive the full amount of healing, even if you are at a max distance away. And then finally, you have Beacon of Faith, which I use for various spread pressure comps, only so in Arena. Again, for BGs, I use Beacon of Virtue, but for Beacon of Faith, I'll use it versus like a Shadow Priest rock comp, or if I feel like my whole team is going to be getting cleaved down, then you get two beacons when you spec into this ability. You can put one beacon on yourself, and you can put an additional beacon on somebody else, and you can swap these around. So if somebody else is dying, or you're dying at the same time, then make sure you put a beacon on yourself, make sure you keep a beacon on him, and then you're going to swap these around. So it's a little confusing at first, but it works really well with like melee wings. It allows you to stabilize the team much faster, and I use it in those situations. Now going into our honor talents, you guys know me. I love love playing gladiators medallion it's just my favorite i know some players will choose relentless because maybe outside of your trinket window you're eating a ton of cc and then eventually when you do trinket following that trinket's a fear or something like that so some people will opt to play relentless if you're a human it's not a bad pick but personally for me i still like gladiators medallion i like having control of when I want to break that CC chain. Now for this next bracket, you really have the option between Divine Favor and Defender of the Week. You can play Vim, but it doesn't work too well in my opinion with Holy Paladin. It's easy to swap onto you if they want to create pressure and because you have things like Blessing of Sacrifice, it just doesn't work well for Holy Paladin's class design. Divine Favor is a nice ability that you can use. It's on a 45 second cooldown, it increases the amount of your healing on your next holy light or flash of light and on top of that it can't be interrupted again it's a 45 second cooldown but this can be purged off or dispelled so you have to be very very careful about when you're using this ability and i will get to that in the later portion of the video now defender of the week has a lot of value this works really well with melee wings it also works well with just in general sometimes players rely too heavily on divine favor now divine favor is really powerful when used right it can literally top somebody from zero to a hundred percent health but it's not a bad idea to experiment with defender of the week if they have a lot of purges if you find that it's getting purged off very often if you want to play the melee wings version of this class then defender of the week is also a valuable option so it's up to you and your personal preference and your play style now for this next bracket once again all of these talent options are viable divine vision just extends the aura of your devotion aura if you're specking into that which you should be by 30 yards so it makes it cover a large distance so everyone around you will be receiving that devotion aura, reducing the amount of damage they take however if you are worried about being trained or your teammate or ally needs that extra movement speed because they're always getting kited you can opt for unbound freedom maybe if you're playing with like an assassination rogue and he's always getting kited unbound freedom is a super useful ability it gives you this nice movement speed on your blessing of freedom and you can give that to your allies or yourself if you are being trained and then finally cleanse the week is a talent that i use very frequently when playing avenger crusader this really counters a lot of these dot classes especially shadow priest shadow priests get countered very hard by cleanse the week i'm surprised they haven't nerfed this talent yet basically the way it works is every time you dispel an ally within your aura that being 10 yards at this point all allies within your aura are dispelled of the same effect so if you dispel this ally over here and he has a vampiric touch and you have a vampiric touch on you you both will be cleansed of the same effect just keep in mind though it's of the same effect so for example if i have mind bomb on myself 
and we both have Vampiric Touch on each other. If I dispel him, it will get rid of the Vampiric Touch, but it will not get rid of the Mind Bomb on myself. So you have to be aware of who you're dispelling and what debuffs or spells you are trying to cleanse. Personally, for me, I usually will couple cleanse the week with melee wings. So keep that in mind, and I'll explain that once again at the end of the video. Now, going into the next bracket, you have Pure of Heart and Light's Grace. Light's Grace is going to be your go to. It increases the amount of healing of your Holy Light by 50%. And on top of that, every time you successfully get out a Holy Light on that target, they will receive 5% reduced damage for eight seconds and it stacks three times so that's 15 percent reduced damage and just on top of all of that once again it increases the amount of healing of your holy light by 50 percent so it's a great go-to for many different comps now pure of heart was recently nerfed in the tool tip i don't know why it takes wow or blizzard so long to correct these tool tips but they recently nerfed pure of heart it states currently, or at least in this tooltip, whenever an ally or you are healed within 20 yards from any source, they are cleansed of all diseases and poisons. This was really great against Unholy DKs and Assassination Rogues. However, they nerfed it to one disease and one poison. So keep that in mind. You can still spec into this if you're fighting an Assassination Rogue or maybe an Unholy DK. You might find that you'll get more value out of Pure of Heart than Light's Grace. So maybe like a Smoke Bomb Cleave or in twos. But keep that in mind, this tooltip is incorrect. It's only one disease and one poison. But most of the time, I pick Light's Grace. It's a great all-around talent. Now for the next bracket, there really is no better choice than Ultimate Sacrifice. It essentially alters your Blessing of Sacrifice, which is a spell that transfers 30% of the incoming damage on that target to you. So if I put Blessing of Sacrifice on him, any damage he takes, 30% of it will be redirected to me. However, with Ultimate Sacrifice, it's 100% of the damage, and it turns into a damage over time effect. So this is an amazing cooldown. It's really a lifesaver. It can prevent anybody from dying. It's a great way of also getting out of CC. So if you put it on the target, remember, if he's taking damage and you're about to get polymorphed or trapped, you can sack that target, and then the damage will be redirected to you, and it will break that CC chain. Just remember that you can fall below 20% health when using Ultimate Sacrifice, so it essentially can kill you. But outside of high dampening games, usually you can heal through this damage. It's relatively easy. Now for the last row, this is where things start to get tricky. You have Blessed Hands and Avenging Crusader. Both of these options are viable and are used in two different situations. If you play like a Mistweaver Monk, you might have heard of Wave the Crane and then maybe AMA Ancient Mistweaver Arts. Avenging Crusader replaces your Avenging Wrath and it's your melee wings. You might have heard this term before. The way it works is it increases the damage of your Crusader Strike and Judgment and Auto Attack damage by 30%. And on top of that, the cooldown recovery rate of your Crusader Strike and Judgment is increased by 30%. So you can throw out a lot more Judgment or Crusader Strikes. And when you are using these damaging abilities, you are healing the nearest two allies. So it's perfect for Arena for 175% of the damage done. So this is really good for adding that additional pressure and fighting against rock comps. You can help close out kills on like Affliction Warlocks or Shadow Priests. It's even good if you're playing like a TSG and you wanna add that additional pressure and just keep your team offensive. Now the cool part about Avenging Crusader is it also puts your Avenging Wrath on a one minute cooldown versus two so you can use it a lot more often now keep in mind the mana cost of avenging crusader is quite high it's 110,000 mana versus no mana for avenging wrath so you can go oom using this spell when you are fighting in combat but once again it's a great way to stabilize your team it's also a good way to add additional pressure now if you're not going to spec into avenging crusader you can go with your go-to talent which is the safer talent option in my opinion it's an easier talent to use and if you're just starting out i recommend that you start off using blessed hands and then work your way onto trying avenging crusader in certain comp scenarios blessed hands essentially adds an additional charge on all of your blessing spells so things like blessing of freedom blessing of sacrifice blessing of protection you get two bops two freedoms and two sacks so you can see this is really powerful in almost every situation it's not so powerful against rock comps because blessing of protection really isn't going to do much for you and blessing of sacrifice might actually start to kill you when you are sacking a lot of that rot damage it's great for the blessing of freedom though however but blessed hands is also good when fighting cc comps maybe you're fighting like a jungle that being feral hunter and you're always getting trapped Maybe you're fighting like an RMP and you're always getting sheeped. Having two Blessing of Sacrifice, Blessing of Sacrifices, Blessing of Sacrifice, having two Blessings of Sacrifice allows you to break out of those CC chains a lot more often. It's really hard to CC a Holy Paladin 
and with two charges on Blessing of Sacrifice, it's really hard to close out a kill on any target other than the Paladin. And if they are in trouble, then they can opt to even bop themselves with two Blessing of Protection or Bubble, or just simply mount up on their steed and get behind a pillar. Now heading into the tips and tricks portion of the guide, I'm mainly going to be talking about these two specs, Blessed Hands and Adventure Crusader. And I know I touched on them earlier, but I'm going to show you my general talent build and then kind of how you're supposed to heal in each build. Now generally, and most of the time, I'm gonna play a build that looks like this. You can swap between Beacon of Faith if there's a lot of spread pressure. I personally like Beacon of the Lightbringer. They're both good options. It's kind of personal preference, but if there's a lot of spread pressure, then Beacon of Faith, that beacon that allows you to use two different beacons, might be good in that scenario, but you will find an insane amount of bonus healing on Beacon of the Lightbringer. And then for my honor talents, if I am using Blessed Hands, my talents will generally look like this. Now, I'll kind of give you a simple rotation of how this class works. I see a lot of players, low rated players of course, especially my subscribers that send me footage and I kind of look at what they're doing wrong and they're not utilizing a lot of their instant casts. As a Holy Paladin, you have several key instant casts. One of them, again, like we talked about, is Bestow Faith, that delayed heal. You also have Light of the Dawn, which is buffed in your artifact weapon. Every time you use Light of the Dawn, targets that receive healing from that ability receive 10% increased healing for 6 seconds. This is key and huge. So once again, you have your delayed heal, you also have your Light of the Dawn, and then one of your more important key abilities, other than Holy Shock, is Light of the Martyr. Now, this ability can be kind of confusing, but the way it works is every time you use Light of the Martyr on the target, you will take a percentage of your health away to heal that target. Now, it only costs 16,000 mana, which is extremely low mana for a Holy Powder. Now, it's instant cast, so you can kind of spam it over and over and over again, but it's a great mana efficient heal. Now, the reason why this ability is so powerful is again, although you take 42% of the healing done in damage, it's instant cast. It's instant cast, so you can spam this over and over and over again. I'll explain why this is so important in a minute. And then finally, you have your bread and butter, your most important healing rotation spell as a Holy Paladin, and that is the legendary old school Holy Shock. Now, what makes Holy Shock so powerful is this passive called Infusion of Life. Basically, every time your Holy Shock crits, you will receive this buff called Infusion of Light. You'll receive this buff and it states that your next Holy Light will be reduced in cast time by 1.5 seconds or your next Flash of Light will be buffed in terms of healing by 50%. Holy Paladin with this spec really revolves around Light's Grace and getting out your Holy Lights because that target will be receiving 50% increased healing on that Holy Light and on top of that, they will be receiving reduced damage based on Light's Grace. Now when you first start out with the Holy Paladin, you're like, man, Holy Light kind of sucks. It's a long cast. It doesn't heal for that much. Well, that one just healed for a million, but you get my point. So what happens is, is that when you don't get your proc on your Holy Shock, you see a lot of players using Flash of Light. Now, Flash of Light, it doesn't heal for too much, and it costs a lot of mana. And this is going to oom you really fast. So perhaps you went into Holy Shock the target. I didn't get a crit, so I didn't proc that Infusion of Light. I'm going to start spamming out my Flash of Light because I can't afford to use my Holy Light because it takes so long to cast out an arena. So maybe then you freak out and you go into using your Blessing of Sacrifice. Maybe you opt to bop the target because you're freaking out, but that is not how the Holy Paladin works. So what you're looking to do when playing this spec is you're looking to take advantage of all of your instant casts. So you wanna make sure you're using your Bestow Faith off cooldown. You wanna make sure you're using your Light of the Dawn to increase the amount of healing that target receives by 10%. And then you're using your Holy Shock off cooldown. Now, when you don't get a crit, you want to kind of go into using your Light of the Martyr and you can kind of spam your Light of the Martyr, throw out another Bestow Faith, use your Light of the Dawn, maybe go for another Holy Shock and hope that it crits. And you're going to rinse and repeat this rotation. Now, I'm not saying never use your Flash of Light. You can use your Flash of Light if you know that that target has a CS up or it's about to come up. Maybe the enemy mage has a counter spell up and you don't have time to cast a Holy Light. It's going to take too long and you don't have anything else to use and you don't want to go into using your Light of the Martyr because you're worried about your own personal health. Then you can go into using your Flash of Light. But really the rotation revolves around these instant casts and it drives me nuts when I see people not using Bestow Faith or Light of the Dawn. Now, Light of the Dawn does cost a lot of mana, but it will increase the amount of healing you do by 10% on that target. If you do not get a crit on your Holy Shock, then just go into using your Light of the Dawn, your Bestow Faith, and then get to a pillar or a safe point where you feel like you can cast your Holy Light to build up your Light's Grace. If targets are stabilized, if your team is stabilizing, then you can just continue to cast Holy Lights to build up or maintain that Light's Grace. And then just go into your Holy Shock, 
Nice. I got a proc, so I get a fast cast holy light. Once that goes down again, I can use my bestow faith. And then my holy shock is almost back up again. And you can kind of rinse and repeat. Now, again, I'm not saying never use your flash of light, but use your instance cast. You can heal for a ton using your light of the martyr. And that will buy you some time into another bestow faith, into another holy shock. And if you don't get a crit, then try and cast the holy light. If they have kicks up, then try and juke the kick anyway. But you should never really be getting kicked on your Holy Paladin. You have so many instant cast abilities, and then you also have your Blessing of Sacrifice, and you're just kind of going through this rotation until you get your wings back. When your wings fall off, you can go into using your Holy Avenger, which will also increase the amount of healing you're doing, and then you also have your Artifact ability, which I'll touch on in a bit. But that's really the rotation. Just use a lot of your instant cast with this ability, and the target falls too low that you can't heal through it. So I got a proc there, so I got a really fast cast Holy Light. I got another proc there, so I'm gonna go into another Holy Light, and I got another one there, so I can do it again. But once your wings fall off, you do feel kind of weak, then you can simply go into using your Bestow Faith, your Light of the Dawn, into a Light of the Martyr spam and then get to a pillar where you feel like you're safe to heal yourself back up. Like I Holy Shock that target on the way out and then now I can Holy Light behind the pillar and you can kind of rinse and repeat this process. Now with this spec, you also have Tears Deliverance and I see people misusing this ability quite a bit. This is a very obvious ability. When you're casting this, it's a two second cast time. You can kind of see the target casting it white in the open. He lifts his sword in the air. Don't let a Paladin cast this, but it's their artifact ability. It applies somewhat of a mediocre hop, but the most important part of this trait is it increases all healing received by your Holy Light and Flash of Light on those allies within your area by 40% for 10 seconds. That's 40% increased healing on your Holy Light and your Flash of Light. And imagine if you are getting those fast cast Holy Lights, or if you have even your Holy Avenger up, you're gonna be topping people so easily when activating Tears Deliverance. It's really noticeable. It's a very, very strong artifact ability. It feels a little goofy at first, but it's really helpful. And when this ability is going on, then you can kind of feel free to using your Flash of Lights to stabilize your team if necessary. Because once again, you're gonna be receiving 40% increased healing on that ability. And if you're not getting a proc on your Holy Light due to your Holy Shock, then yeah, use your Flash of Light. You're healing for 40% more, which means that you're not gonna be using as many Flash of Lights, so you won't oom as fast because you are getting that increased healing. But keep in mind, if you are getting trained down or they're chasing after you and you're trying to get a proc on your Holy Shock to heal yourself, but right now I didn't get one and I'm at like 10% HP and here comes this warrior, then of course, don't sit here and cast this slow cast Holy Light. Go into some Flash of Light spams to heal yourself up to get out of that execute range. And then once you stabilize, then you can go back to casting those Holy Lights like we talked about earlier to maintain that Light's Grace ability. Now also keep in mind, if you are the one getting trained, you can rely on your divine favor. Just make sure that you get behind a pillar if there are enemies on the team like a priest or a mage that can take away this divine favor buff. If they are chasing you down, you can activate your divine favor into a holy light and they can't interrupt you on this cast. But also keep in mind that divine favor will increase the healing on your next flash of light by 100%, not just holy light. So let's say I activated my holy shock. I got a proc there. Then maybe in this case, I would go into casting a divine favor holy light. But if I don't get, I'm getting crits like crazy, Jesus. Stop critting. There you go. I didn't crit there. So for example, if you use your divine favor ability and you run around the corner and you holy shock yourself and you don't get a proc off that holy shock, then just go into using divine favor into that flash of light. If you are in execute range, if you're in dead range, if you're about to die, then do not use a slow cast holy light. You'll get the bonus healing on your divine favor on your flash of light and get out of that execute range. All right, now that I've gone through all of that, let's go into Avenger Crusader, your melee build. Very similar to Blessed Hands, just keep in mind that you do not have double freedom or double sack or double bop, but instead you have a melee version of your wings, which we talked about earlier. When you activate this ability, your judgment and crusader strikes will heal your allies around you. Now, when specced into Avenger Crusader, I like going cleanse the weak. You don't always have to. Sometimes you might want to go Avenger Crusader because your team just wants that extra pressure or you think that I'm finding like an Affliction Warlock who's playing a single target drain spec, maybe Cleanse the Weak won't be as helpful as Divine Vision or Unbound Freedom, but I still wanna run Melee Wings. This is generally the spec I will go, and I'll swap between any of these if I need the extra protection, if I want the extra movement speed, if I want extra cleansing, or I'll go with Defender of the Week or Divine Favor. It just depends on the matchup. I like Defender of the Week with Melee Wings. It gives me that extra haste, which allows me to get out those extra casts, and I'll explain why that is so important in a second. 
or if you feel like, you know what, I feel comfortable using Divine Favor, then just go with that as well. Now, just like using Blessed Hands, when using your melee wings, when you're on the outside, just heal normal, right? Go back into that same rotation. Holy Shock into Holy Light. Go ahead and use your Bestow Faith, your Light of the Dawn, and then continue to use these instant cast abilities. I got a proc there. Still going to use Holy Light. I can use my Light of the Martyr if I need to, if I want to use that to stabilize somebody until I get back my Holy Shock. But when you feel like you want to go in and use your melee wings, maybe everybody is rotting down, or you want to go in to add that extra pressure, you'll activate your melee wings, and you'll start beating on the target using your Crusader Strike. Make sure you always use your Judgment off cooldown. Number one, it's going to heal for just about the most. And on top of that, when you use your Judgment on a target, not only does it build that defensive trait like we talked about earlier in your Artifact Weapon, but it also will increase the damage of your Crusader Strike for the next six seconds by 30%. So the more damage you do, the more healing you're going to do. So make sure you keep that in mind to always throw out your Judgments to maintain that damage buff and increase your damage. And it also buffs your Holy Shock, but you're not going to use your Holy Shock on the target unless it's for like a 1% kill and the guy's about to die. Even during your melee wings, you want to make sure you're Holy Shocking off cooldown. Why? When you're using your Holy Shock during your melee wings, it's going to help stabilize your team even as you're doing damage. Sometimes the damage isn't enough and you're going to need that single target healing. But on top of that, Holy Light and Flash of Light have a chance to unlock the power of the Silver Hand. It increases the healing of your next Holy Shock by 10% of all the damage and effective healing you do within the next 10 seconds. A lot of the Twitchful Gladiators that I've seen in chat, they were telling me, Stoops, you're playing Melee Wings wrong. Don't use any Holy Lights during your Melee Wings. That's not true. All the Twitchful Glads kept telling me that. But what's important for you guys to understand is you want to cast and proc this trait, Power of the Silver Hand, during Melee Wings. Because what will happen is, is you're going to be healing on your next Holy Shock 10% of all the healing and damage you've done over that 10 seconds. So once you go into your melee wings, I'm going to try and proc this buff for the sake of the video. So I'm going to spam out these flash of lights and see if I can get it to proc. Ideally, you want to proc it beforehand, but if I can get it to proc during this time frame, boom, I got it. So when you get one of these procs on your holy light and you're in melee wings, it's going to allow you to try and cast off a fast cast holy light or even a flash of light. And if you can proc that power of the silver hand during your melee wings, you're going to be doing a lot of healing on your next holy shock because power of the silver hand is going to increase the healing on your next holy shock depending on how much damage and healing you do over that time period. So when you come out of your melee wings and you've been beating things up and you're healing your whole team, that holy shock is going to heal for an insane amount. So if you can line that all up, that holy shock will heal for an absurd amount. I'm talking like somebody's full health bar. And then I proc my power of the silver hand. I'm going to do whatever I can to do as much healing and damage as I can because this holy shock is about to heal us for an insane amount. Now, granted, I'm not in a party. I'm not healing my allies, but it's really effective to line up your melee wings with this trait. You don't always have to do it, but it's still a plus. Now, another reason why I feel like using your fast cast holy lights during your melee wings. I don't sit there and cast a slow one, but if I can holy shock while I'm beating things up in my melee wings and I can cast out one of these holy lights, first of all, it's additional healing and it's going to heal a lot more if it's a proc than just me beating things up. But on top of that, if I get CS'd during my melee wings going for a holy light, it's not the end of the world because I can still do damage. I can still beat things up and add additional damage during that time, which is going to heal my team. And then when I get out of my melee wings, he's already used his counter spell or interrupt. So you're baiting out interrupts. If they kick you during your melee wings, it's a good thing for you because you can still do damage to heal your team. And then when you get out, you can just run away, get to the back and start casting heals and you've already baited an interrupt. So people that tell you don't heal during melee wings, it's false. But don't sit there and just use your entire melee wings just casting slow holy lights. Use your holy shocks and then make sure you also use your light of the dawn, right? Because you're going to be stacked up on top of each other. That's going to allow for 10% increased healing based on your trait like we talked about earlier. And then continue to beat things up. So use your light of the martyr. Make sure you're using your bestow faith like we talked about for the other build. Holy shock. Go into a fast cast holy light and then beat things up during your melee wings. And once they fall down, mount up. Get out of there and continue to heal just like the normal spec. Now, I'm also going to include some judgment macros that I use that allows me to judgment much easier. I just use ASND, and if I use ASND 
it will target the target and also throw a hammer at them. I'm never going to target somebody and then not use my judgment macro. This is all explained in my macro video that I'll put in the description box below that'll tell you how to use these macros. I also have a hammer of justice macro and then I also have then I also have repentance macros. All these macros will be included in the description box below. I recommend you watch that video first because it will explain how to use those macros effectively. Now, as far as comps go, Holy Paladins have a lot of comps, right? You have FMP, Feral, Fire, Mage, Pally. You can also play Double Caster comps. You can play any comp with a Holy Paladin and Excel. You can play Shadow Priest, Destro. There's tons of comps that Holy Paladins can play and Excel in. And as far as the spec goes overall, Holy Paladin is one of my favorite classes to play. I haven't played it a lot recently because I'm using it to kind of help my subscribers on Alliance. I used to queue it a lot more last season, but it's still a great class to pick up. It has a decently high skill cap, and it's also easy for beginners to pick up. So if you're new to healing, I highly, highly recommend the Holy Paladin. That's going to do for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. If you have any more questions regarding the Holy Paladin or anything related, you can leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you guys right away. Try to miss me on my YouTube and Twitch live stream where I answer all of your guys' questions in depth. Do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.